Shalawan. First and foremost, we want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rechakodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And peace and blessings to all you Akim out there pushing this word with our truth and sincerity. And we want to go into a lesson, um, as we know, the Passover coming up in about, what, a week? A few days, really. Uh, the Passover coming up, you know, uh, as, as the scripture says, a solemn assembly is a serious time, man. Just look at your Shai Passover is a serious time. But we want to go into a lesson speaking on the then and the now. You know, the Passover then with Moses and the Israelites when they first came out of Egypt. And now, how that applied to us today. And what we really want to focus on in this lesson is that lamb that we had to eat at that Passover, the blood of the lamb, you see, and how we have to have that blood of the lamb over our doorposts, man. You know, and also the unleavened bread and the bitter herbs. So these are the things that we want to go go into so Lord willing this lesson be edifying. You know, you want to say anything? I'm just going to come. Is Exodus 12, verse 3. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. So key word, it says a lamb, right? It says, and if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Come, come. Now then they had to take an actual lamb, an animal, a literal lamb. You see? But now in these times, we have a lamb that the most high provided for us. We don't have to take an actual lamb. Right? I mean, yeah, we keep the Passover. We 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 get the lamb, I mean, you know, we, we, we you know, we rehearse it, we rehearse the righteous acts, you know, but it ain't just gonna be perfect. I understand what he was saying though. Kind of, kind of. No, but water, this, uh, water. Yeah. this uh, John 1 and 29. The next day, John sees Yahweh Shah coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of the Most High, which taketh away the sin of the world. The Lamb of the Most High. This is the Lamb, uh, um, which is symbolic for that Lamb in the Old Testament, man. Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. This is our Lamb now. Although, like the brother just said, yeah, we eat the lamb on the Passover, but Yahweh Shai is that lamb, man. Spiritual. Spiritually. Kind of spiritual. Kind of. You can get back to that Exodus. Kind of. This is uh, Exodus 12 and verse 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish. So that lamb, that lamb shall be without blemish. Hmm. No spot, no, no defect. Nothing wrong with it. That's that lamb they had to take then. Right? It says a male the first year, you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Kind. Of. So that lamb that they had to get had to be a perfect lamb. No spot, no defect, no blemish upon it, man. Okay. Now spiritually today, now we just got in the scriptures, the brother just got, that lamb today is Yahweh Shai. You see? And as the scripture the brother about to get, go go ahead, up. Kind of. So when the scripture just said that you have to take in Exodus twelve, you gotta take a lamb. Without spot and without blemish, mm -hmm. and you know, and in John it said that Yahweh Shah was a lamb. And mm -hmm. let's see what type of lamb was Yahweh Shah. Right. This is um, First Peter one and eighteen. It says, "For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your from from your fathers," it says, "But with the precious blood of Hamashiach." As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. A lamb without blemish and without spot. He was perfect. No defects. And also morally uh, uh, without blemish, man. You see? He was unblameable. You know? Without guile, man. Yeah, he never went off. Never went off. He was perfect. He was righteous. And that's that lamb that we have today. That's, that's what's important to us today, man. That unblemished lamb. You see, just like they had to have that unblemished lamb then. That's Yahweh Shai is our unblemished lamb now. You know? Uh, it's Exodus 12 and 6. And ye shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation shall kill it in the evening. Now, we can go into how that lamb was killed. All right, because Yahweh Shai was a lamb. So this is... Uh, 
Isaiah 53, starting at uh, seven. It says, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb. As right, a lamb. Yahushua, <laughs> Yahushua the lamb. So it says, he was brought as a lamb, all right, to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth, all right? So the lamb got killed, all right? Because it says the Most High gave his son out in John 3, 16. And he came and he got killed. You know, he got delivered up, all right, by all people, which are the Negroes, like Tito's Native American, the Israelites, all right? And he was crucified, all right, by the Romans, you know? And from him doing that, all right, it's, it's symbolic for unto what we did in, um, for the Passover when they killed the lamb. Yep. You know? Hey, what, um, like me, we were speaking of earlier, when Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac, he was stopped. The Most High said, no, I'm going to provide a lamb. And Yahweh was that lamb that was provided, man. He was that sacrifice. You know? I think, I think, I think uh, it went like that. Um, basically, when, um, when, when, when Isaac no, when Abraham, you know, basically they were getting ready to go sacrifice or whatever, but Isaac didn't see the sacrifice. Kind. And then he was like, you know, uh, basically what a lamb at. And then Abraham was like, the most I can provide him. Right. Right, kind. Yeah. Yep, yep. And Yahweh yeah. yeah. is that lamb that was provided for us, man. An unblemished lamb. Not just a lamb, but an unblemished, a perfect lamb. You know? So this is, uh, you gonna get that what? You can get, uh, exit. You can read Exit 6 and go to 7. Kind. Uh, this is, um, Exodus 12 and 6, and ye shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Mm -hmm. And they shall take of the blood and strike it and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. So when you killed this lamb, you had to take the blood of that lamb and strike it upon the two side posts of your of the door of your house and on the upper door post, right? Which, if you had that blood on your upper doorpost, you wasn't going to be spared from being put to death. No. In that time, they had to literally and physically put blood on the upper doorpost and on the side post. Now, that upper doorpost, in, us, to these, in these times, the spiritual is our mind now. You know? That upper doorpost is our mind, man. And the brother going to prove it through the scriptures. Okay, this is uh, Revelation 3 and 20. Behold, I stand at the door. At that door. This is how was shy speaking that lamb, right? It says, and not. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Okay. All right, so it's not literally talking about how was shy go bitch of your, your front doorstep knocking on the door, you know, asking for permission to come in. All right, that's not what they're talking about. It's talking about your mind. You got that in uh, in uh, wisdom. Kind. Yeah. This is uh, wisdom and Solomon six and uh, fourteen, and this is talking about wisdom. It says, "Whoso seeketh her early, shall have no great travail, for he shall find her sitting at his doors." Kind. Of, that's not actually talking about a person called wisdom or better do wisdom. Who is it? It's wisdom. <laughs> Sophia? Yeah. No, man. Go you gonna, you gonna see wisdom actually sitting at your doorstep? Looking That's in the not... people and show at it. Wisdom yeah. out there? Yeah. No, no, <laughs> man. What no. Talking about. It's talking about your mind, man. Constantly meditating upon the scriptures, understanding the scriptures, the true understanding, man. You know, understanding the Lamb. You see? Con. You go ahead. You got any points you wanna make? No, nah, I'm gonna go back to Exodus twelve. Is uh, Exodus twelve and eight? You can go to seven again. I'll All right, sure. Exodus twelve and seven. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the house wherein they shall eat it. Right, hey, and not just in your mind understanding the scriptures, you see having the wisdom of your house by Shema Shah in your mind, but it said take the blood. We have to understand in our mind what Yahweh Shah did for us, man. Understanding the sacrifice and knowing how much Yahweh Shah had to go through just for us. You see, just so we can have mercy and grace, man. We got to constantly keep that in our mind that he sacrificed his life. And us seeing that and being, him being that great example, we got to continue, Lord willing, to be that sacrifice as well, man. You see? That's how important Yahweh's blood is. Let me go ahead out. Verse 8. 
and they shall eat the flesh. And it says, and they shall eat the flesh, and that night roast with fire, and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Huh. All right, now we finna go into the, the flesh and the unleavened bread. All right, so how it applies unto the day. Huh. All right, how is it, how is it um, symbolic unto your house shop? Yep. You know? I'll read it for you. This is John 6 and 51. This is how Shai is speaking. He says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. Okay. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Okay. It, says, it says the bread that he will give is his flesh. All right, so if this your first time, you know, like waking up to the truth, like this, your, like you don't have a real understanding, you are gonna hear that and be like, man, what the, what is that talking about? What do you mean, eating his flesh? Talking about cannibalism? Yeah, what are you talking <laughs> about? He wants to eat him? Why would the son of the most I say that? All right, so this is uh, this is John, one, and fourteen. It says, and the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. All right, says the word was made flesh. That that the word that was made flesh is talking about Yahweh Shah, all right, the Son of the Most High. It's saying right. the only begotten of the Father. Come, and if you read Psalms 40. I got you right here. It's Psalms 40 and 7. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. Come, so. This book is Yahweh Shah. Yep. All right, and it says that the basically the the, the book or the word all right was made flesh, mm -hmm. all right, because everything everything in it is about him. Yep. All right, and he kept everything perfectly. All right, in, in the scripture, he came to fulfill the things that were written of him. Yep. You know, so when he when it, when he was talking about the flesh, all right, and um, I read and, it again. Come on. This is John six and fifty one. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. Done. So now we know that it's not talking about taking a bite out of the Lord. All right. <laughs> like Yashua Bible said, we good. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> it's not talking about that. It's talking about it's talking about this word, man. That's what it's talking about. Right. All right. Eating Un this word. Understanding the word, man. Getting into it. You see? When you when you eat something, you digest it. We have to digest this word, man. Get uh -huh. into it. Um, become as Yahweh Shai, man. Embody, personify Yahweh Shai, man. Uh -huh. You see? Get the true understanding of the scriptures. That's what he said when he said, eat my flesh. Man, understand me. You see? Understand the word, man. And he come in the volume of the book. So that's from the front to the back cover. You know? I'm going to finish reading for you. Right? Verse 52. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us... Flesh to eat. Kind of like we were just saying, like, bro, this man just said, eat him. So they were spiritual. They were thinking of a carnal. Like, they're like, man, I'm not finna go eat this dude. You know, Jake, you know? man, this nigga talking about giving us his flesh to eat. Yeah. <laughs> it says, that's crazy, bro. It says, the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Yahweh said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Okay. So then we're going to jump straight to Matthew 26 and uh, 26. It says, and as they were eating, Yahweh shot took bread. And, it, and matter of fact, you can go to 17 real quick. Because this, this the night of the Passover, which we're coming up into now. You see? This is Matthew 26 and 17. It says, now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread... The disciples came to Yahweh Shah, saying unto him, What wilt thou prepare for thee to eat the Passover? So it was the Passover and the night of the unleavened bread. Come. Because it's, it's in the evening. You see? But go ahead. You can go to 26. Now, so I just wanted to get that to show. That night he was with his disciples, giving them bread. It was the night of the Passover and unleavened bread. All right, just Matthew 26, verse 26. And as they were eating, Yahweh Shah took bread and blessed it. And break it and gave to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Alright? And we know that 
on the Passover, you know, just like you just said, it was the, uh, you read verse 17, it was a feast of unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. All right, so he didn't pass them no leavened bread. All he right. said, take and eat. All right, for this is, he said, this is my body. So he referred to himself as unleavened bread. All right, so I'm going to get that, um, I'm going to get that Corinthians real quick. All right, because leaven and unleavened have a spiritual meaning. Yep. All right, so this is uh, 1 Corinthians 5, and uh, I started at 6. It said, Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even ye how was shot, I will pass over and sacrifice for us. Mm -hmm. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, all right? Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. So leaven wickedness. Is, is malice and wickedness. All right? So he referred to himself as unleavened, not the leaven of wickedness. All right, so now what is unleavened talking about? It says, but with unleavened bread of sincerity yeah. and truth. Yeah. All right? Yahusha said that I am the way, the truth, and the spirit, light. I'm going to say that. <laughs> kind, He's kind. the truth. That's the spirit. You know? <laughs> So he's the unleavened bread, all right? The lamb without blemish or without spot, yeah, man. all right? So that's, that's what he was talking about. Yeah. And and that's the word. God. That's the word. And and now to us, of course, we get the, the leaven out of our house, but it's also within ourselves, man. Purge out that leaven within ourselves, you see? Be, uh, for the Passover, just like we do carnally, you know, within our households. But you can go ahead, Oxford, like it. Done. Matthew 26, verse 26. And as they were eating, Yahweh shot took bread and blessed it. And break it and gave to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for right. this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. You heard? Right. Hey, now, and now while, while we got that, to show you, going back to Exodus 12 and verse 8, it says, Cornerly then, right? It says, and they shall eat the flesh, the flesh of what? The flesh of that lamb. And now, Yahweh Shai said, we shall eat that bread. We shall eat him, right? Which is, he is that lamb now, the unblemished lamb, man. Which is, by way of the scriptures, understanding the word. So it says, they shall eat the flesh and the night roast with fire and unleavened bread. Then he handed them all bread and said, take, eat, this is my flesh, the bread. It was the night of unleavened bread. So he is that unleavened bread, man. Righteousness, perf perfection, man. It says, it says, and they shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it, man. Kind. So not just the lamb, not just the unleavened bread, but also with bitter herbs, you know. Kind. This is uh, this is uh, real quick. This is uh, Revelation ten, and um, and nine. It says, and I went unto the angel and said unto him. Give me the little book, which is talking about the scriptures. Yep. It which says, is which is locky, which is who? Yahweh Shah. Yep. It says, and he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. <laughs> Alright? It keeps it keeps talking about eating, eating, eat, eating. Alright? So this is what it's talking about. It says, Take and eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth as sweet. That's honey. Yeah, and if I can make a point, it ain't yeah. actually talking about you buying the Bible and bite, yeah. biting it like, man, I don't, I don't like, I don't like, I don't crazy, like people. You crazy as hell, you bite. You it's, the scripture. And it's, that's so, like how Shai said, he who have ears, let him hear, man. If you spiritual, you gonna understand it ain't talking about actually eating. It's talking about understanding it, man. The true understanding. All right, yeah, and that bitter is basically talking about that hell. Yep. All right, because when you come to this truth, all right, it's gonna be sweet unto you. Everything is, is gonna be good. All right, you found out you're an Israelite, you know, Kwame Asherala, all of that. And then the bitter part start coming in. You start, you start, you start losing things. All right, you start experiencing things. You know, you know, you start. You might lose a job. You know, you might lose a woman. You know, all of that. All right, that that, that comes with the bitterness of this truth. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we finna go back. Kind of got you. This is Exodus 12 and 8. And they shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and bitter herbs shall they eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor siding at all with water, but roast with fire. His head, so eat 
This is about to tell you what parts of this lamb to eat, right? It says, roast with fire, his head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof. And you go into the word pertinence, it's the middle part, all of it. So don't, don't just eat one part of the lamb, eat all of this lamb, man. Mm. Eat everything of this lamb. You see? And it says, verse 10, and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. Done. So, all of it, bro. All of it. It says, just like you said, the heads and the legs. You know everything. You don't let nothing remain. So, what is that telling you? The whole, the whole thing. The whole thing. The man. whole thing. So, what did the Most High tell Ezekiel? Which we, we gotta remember, spirit. We gotta apply this spiritually now. Yahweh Shai is that lamb. Here's the word, right? Done. It says, this is Ezekiel three one. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll, which is the scriptures, and go speak unto the house of Israel. He said, so I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. All right? So he said, eat this roll. He didn't say, eat part of the roll. All right? And the roll is the Bible. Just Cun. in case, you know, you know. Cun. He said, eat, eat this roll. All right? He didn't say, eat a little bit of this right here. Eat a little bit of that. Take the whole thing. Mm -hmm. All right? Yahweh Shah. All right, the whole lamb. The whole lamb. Right. They said the head, the legs, and the pertinence, man. The Everything. Lamb. You know, then we can jump to uh, Ezekiel 2 and 8. All right? Because you know about that bitter, the bitter herbs. All right? Yeah. It says that uh, Ezekiel 2, verse 8. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And when I look, behold... And hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book the scriptures. was therein. And he spread it before me, and was written within and without. There was written therein lamentations, mourning, and woe. Alright? So this book had, was full of lamentations, mourning, and woe, which woe means destruction. Alright? But the so, most I was telling them to eat this. Mm -hmm. This is within the book. All right, just like when you go back here to Exodus, all right, Exodus 12. I, I got to read it for you. Go on. We're going to start at 9. I yeah, start. Exodus 12 and 9. Eat not of it raw, nor a siding at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and the purchase thereof, and ye shall let none, nothing of it remain until the morning. Come So you had to eat, you got you to take in, you got to take in this whole robe, bro, everything. So, like, when you kept the Passover back then, you couldn't just say, oh, I want to eat this. I'm, I'm going to eat this lamb right here. I'm going to eat this unleavened bread. <laughs> I'm going to drink the yaya. Yeah, yeah, but when you get to the bitter herbs, you're going to slide it. You know, you want this, brother? You know, you can have it. No, I, don't, I don't want the harsh like you can nah, have No, you have to eat that shit, man. Required. It's required, all right? So when you, it's like when you come into this truth, it's required for you to take that bitterness, all right? Mm -hmm. Take the whole thing. You know, it's like when it said that, um, that this book is full of lamentations, mourning, and woe, all right? And Isaiah 53 says that Yahweh Shah was a man acquainted with grief. So if you're eating Yahweh Shah, all right, which is the scriptures Ooh. taking it in, you're going to be the same way. God. You know? So God. you 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 taking on his ways, all right? Matter of fact, quick precept, bro. Quick, real quick precept. Back in John 6, this is what Yahweh Shah said. John 6 and... 56, he that eat of my flesh and drink of my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. Which We're trying to become like Yahweh Shai, man. Uh, measure up to the stature of Yahweh Shai. We're trying to be perfect like him. You see? So Yahweh Shai, like the brothers say, he wasn't just happy. No, he was acquainted with griefs. So if we trying to be like him, embody him, personify him, then we're going to be, of course, meditating upon the kingdom, righteousness, happiness, but also that bitter part, man. Like the Passover, that lamb shit, that lamb good. Yeah, that unleavened bread good. Give me another cup of yayan. <laughs> but you have to have on that plate bitter herbs too. You have to have that horseradish, man. Or whatever bitter herbs brothers get, man. And yeah, well, I forgot too. You know, when we eat the bitter herbs for the Passover, it basically you know, represents the uh, the hell. Like when you get the, the feeling that you get from you after you eat the bitter herbs, all right, if you, whoever ate it, you know, you know what I'm talking about, you know. Basically, symbolizes the hell that we caught, all right, in, uh, in, in ancient Egypt, all right. The bitterness, you know, how bitter it was, you know, and and that's how that that relates to the hell, you know, that we catching in this truth. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know? What it said in, uh, I think it's Luke, um, about building a house before, uh, pretty much know what you're getting yourself into before count you- Count the cost? Count the cost, count the cost. Before you come to the Passover, you know you got to eat the bitter herbs, <laughs> you know? Okay. You know you got to. And if you don't want to eat it, then you eat it unworthily, man. What the, what the, what the, what the book say, um, in Sirach 2? You know, well, before you come to the Lord, prepare thyself for temptation. Mm, so He letting you know that you're going to catch that bitter. You're going you gonna to have to go through that bitter. Right? You're going to have to catch ill. All right? And the only ones who willing to get the good, the sweet, and the bitter is the ones who follow the lamb, whether so ever he goes, which is what? The lamb is who? Yahweh Shai. So wherever he goes, everything these scriptures say, you agree with, you understand, you accept it, man. You with it. You with it. Ain't no doubt. You with it. Yahweh shine the heavens. We can't go. We can't go in the heavens and follow him. Be right behind him. Almost the Most High, right here. Yeah, no, man. <laughs> he is the Word, right? This is how we follow him through the Scriptures, man. Through the Scriptures. But I'm gonna finish this for you, in Exodus 12. Right? Yeah. Exodus 12 and 10. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth until the morning, ye shall burn it with fire. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded. Your shoes on, your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste, quickly, quickly, with a sense of urgency. It is Yahweh's Passover, man. God, so you had to. So when eating, when we, when we kept the Passover back then, we didn't, we didn't have time, you know, sit around chilling, put some music on, you know, like I U I C, yeah, have weddings and shit. On come on, man. Black Wall Street, talking. Hey, hey, I, what you did yesterday, bro? You having regular conversations? No. Cut the shit looking like shit. I was chilling me. Yeah, yeah bro. Come on, man. Ain't none of that. Look, <laughs> when we kept when we kept the Passover, bro, we was about to get ready and get the fuck up out of Egypt. If I could add real quick, uh, you gotta think, bro. The Egyptians were getting put to death. And they, they knew that. It wasn't no just happy, bro. It was it was a, a, a solemn assembly. It was a serious time, man. You know? So like it, bro. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, come like I said, so it said you you had to be prepared, bro. It said eat it in haste, cause we was about to get hey bro, it's gonna be time to go. Ain't had no time, to, like I just said, sitting down having normal conversations, you know, taking your time with it, you know. No, you had you had to hurry up, brother. We finna go. All right. So, how that how that how that symbolizes to the to today? All right, with the lamb, the bitter herbs, and everything. We gotta hurry up and get this truth in, because mm -hmm. your house shot, like you said, like the brother that said earlier, your house shot. I got you. Revelation twenty two and twelve. And behold, I come quickly. Yeah. So, <laughs> your house shot. He he can he can come at any time. Like thief said, in the night. Thief in this. What I'm saying. Thief in the night. So you don't know. So you gotta be prepared. All right. You can't be just chilling around. You know, thinking, oh, we are gonna be here for another 20, 30 years. The ten virgins. Five uh, was foolish. Five was five. The wise five wise ones. They got that shit. Not slacking, not shit. But they got they got it in. They they got the knowledge. The unwise they ain't get it. You see, slacking, bro. Con. Yeah. So that's how it relates unto today. I mean, you gotta hurry up and get this before this destruction comes. All right, because and that night Yahweh shot. He was the death angel, and he was gonna mm. pass over Egypt and kill all the firstborn. Mm. You know, so the destruction was about to come, and Yahweh shot is about to return a second time. So you gotta hurry up and get it. Mm -hmm. All right, get to put that blood on your doorpost, on, on, on your mind, so he can pass over. Yep. You know, everybody get into that blood right now. It says, verse twelve, Exodus twelve and twelve. And this, this, I'm gonna start at eleven again, cause this is why they had to eat it fast. Verse eleven, and thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your clothes on, your shoes on your feet, your shoes on, and your staff in your hand ready, and you shall eat it in haste, quickly. It is Yahweh's Passover. This is why. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am Yahweh. That's why you had to eat it in haste because that death angel was coming. That's why we got to get this word quickly now because that death angel, Yahweh Shai, is coming once again. And this, 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 now we're about to go into the significance of the blood, the blood, man, of that unblemished lamb, how important it is, then and now, right? Verse 13, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. Remember it said, put it on the, the two side doorposts and upon the upper doorposts, right? It says, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, so when that death angel come, he see the blood on your doorpost. I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. You see? 
You got anything to add? No. Nah. God. So when he seen when he seen that blood, he wasn't gonna touch you. He was gonna pass over you. But if you didn't have that blood, you was gonna be put to death by Yahweh Shai, man. The same thing now spiritually today. If we don't have Yahweh Shai, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of Yahweh Shai in our mind, you know, constantly meditating upon it, knowing what Yahweh Shai did, how much his blood means us, then you gonna get killed. But if so, you got you you good. You gonna you gonna be. Go ahead. Now, I was going to say, the crazy thing is, like, everybody that was there, you know, because he said all of Israel got brought out of Egypt, and like, everybody was able to go get that lamb and, you know, and to, and to, and to put their, their blood on the doorpost. Yeah. All right? But in these times, everybody can't get the lamb. All right? Only the elect is going to have that blood, you know? Because all of our people are not going to get saved on, on, on this time, all right? Because, you know, two-thirds still got to get put to death, you know? You know, so and, and this time everybody is not gonna take part, all right, in the second Passover. You know, or the second Exodus, I should say. Yep. Everybody's not gonna eat of that lamb. You know, well, it really is the Passover and the Exodus. You know, yeah. you know, because if we had that blood, he gonna pass over. Yeah. But you, you're right. You're right. Let me grab this Romans for you. Yeah. This Romans five and eight. But the Most High commendeth his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Mashiach died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, that the blood of the Lamb, right? We shall be saved from wrath through him. Like the blood from the Passover in ancient Egypt, all right? That blood of that Lamb saved us from the wrath of that death angel from passing over and killing our firstborns because we had that blood on the doorpost. All right, but now Yahweh Shah blood, all right, that covers the elect is going to save them from the wrath that he's bringing a second time when he returns, all right, to destroy this place, all right, because they will be protected. All right. I got a uh, think We can end it off on this one. This is Hebrews 9 and 13. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. So if an actual bull, uh, 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 the lamb in the Passover, you see, if that blood make you clean again, uh, uh, wash away your sins, right? Verse 14, how much more shall the blood of Mashiach, so how much more shall the blood of Yahweh Shai, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot, to the Most High, that unblemished lamb. Purge your conscience from the dead works to serve in the living power. So if an actual lamb, and then in Egypt, where Moses knew, had that death angel pass over you, how much more the blood of Yahweh Shai? How much more, man? Come on. Uh, now I'm finna say you, you done with that? Come on. Yeah. It's a point that we really left out, all right? That I wanted to touch back on for we end the lesson. On when Yahweh Shah basically said, "Eat his flesh and drink his blood," all right, because this was this was the precept, all right, that I had for that for the blood. Leviticus seventeen and eleven. Mm -hmm. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that make it an atonement for the soul. All right, so it's life in the flesh. I mean, in the blood, it's like it's life in the blood. So Yahweh Shah told us to drink his to drink his blood. So Yahweh Shah, he gave us life, all right, through the understanding of this word. Alright? It's like he says in uh, Ephesians. What you about to grab? I'll get that John. How he said, uh, drink my blood, you shall live. Come on, you can, yeah. you can get that. Yeah, but in um in Ephesians 2, alright, it says that basically that I'm I'm just gonna grab it real quick. I got it for you. Ephesians 2 and what? 2 and 1. Ephesians 2 and 1. And ye have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Yeah, the word quicken basically means to make alive. All right. And if you get John 6, chapter 63, it said it is, the, it is the spirit that quickened. So like in John 6 and 63, it is the spirit that quickened of the flesh profit of nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So we got life from hearing these words. We got quickened. All right, we got we, we was made alive. Through the understanding and the wisdom of understanding of this word, all right, through Yahweh Shah, all right, that's how it was made alive, all right. So when he said to drink to drink his blood, that's what he was talking about, you yeah. know. Yeah. 
I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab this real quick. John 6 and 53 again. Then Yahweh Shah said it to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life. So tell him, in order to live, in order to get past over, you have to eat Yahweh Shah and drink Yahweh Shah, which is the word, man. Come on. Understand it and accept it. Follow the line whatsoever he go. You know, that's all I got out. Is, hey man, so hey, with that Lord willing, it was that a fine. You know, just wanted to go into a lesson speaking on the then and the now of the Passover as we're coming up upon these times and how important that important that unblemished lamb is and the uh the, the blood from the unblemished lamb, man. So with that we want to give all praises, honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kabudash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to all you occupants that are pushing this word with our truth and sincerity and with that, Shalom. Shalom.